everyone. Thank you for being here at a 5.30 session. And uh, even though it's the first day of the conference, um, I wanted to today, you know, as uh, co-chair of the TAG for Observability, uh, chat a little bit about what we have been doing in, on the TAG and what are some of the discussions that are ongoing, the projects, as well as uh, talk a bit about some of the cool projects that we've kick-started. So with that said, many of you already probably know me. I'm Alalisa Sharma. I uh, have been on the Open Telemetry Governance Committee for uh, a few years now. So fourth year, I think. No, third year. Um, I also have been the co-chair for the observability tag for a year now and have been super happy to kind of drive some of the initiatives that we've been leading in the TAG and also working closely with all the observability projects. And I also am, um, I also lead all the observability engineering at Apple for all the AIML projects, uh, which includes Siri. So with that said, um, I also recently joined the CNCF uh, governing board for, uh, on behalf of Apple and again, hope that we can all represent our uh, observability projects uh, and support our uh, developers and engineers on the projects. With that said, again, today, we have two co-chairs on the tag. Uh, Matt Young, who is not here, he couldn't come, but um, me and Matt Young have been the active co-chairs. Um, tech leads, Bartek, who has been uh, part of the community for a long time, uh, and he kind of uh, joins in whenever he can. But again, this is also an opportunity for others to uh, join as technical leaders and as subject matter experts in the, uh, in the tag. As well as there are a few working groups that I just wanted to call out. Uh, the observe, uh, observability, observe.kts is a work group where Kubernetes specific observability uh, projects as well as components are being discussed. And that's a regular you know, work group that has already been approved by the TOC, and folks are already actively working there. There are a couple of other initiatives and key discussions that may result in work groups that is in progress right now, specifically the uh, query standardization effort, which, we would, uh, which I'll be talking about more in detail. And uh, there's also been a lot of good work on profiling, which has been done in the tag, which has actually then kickstarted a lot of the profiling effort uh, and the profiling support on the open telemetry project itself. So that said, again, just wanted to give you a picture of the landscape of the projects in the observability space that CNCF has. And obviously, there are a lot more other projects in the larger space of observability that are vendor-based, but yet open source. But they, you know, again, interoperate with many of these key projects. As you know, the only three projects that have graduated in the CNCF world are Fluentd, Jaeger, and Prometheus. The incubating projects or in incubation status, believe it or not, are large projects such as Open Telemetry on one hand, and then also other projects which are, you know, which have been very popular, Cortex and Thanos included, uh, Open Metrics, which has been used uh, both by Prometheus as well as uh, interoperability and fully compliant on the OTEL side, on the Open Telemetry side. Uh, Thanos and Cortex also use open metrics. So again, uh, there's, uh, there is a lot of uh, good collaboration in, across those projects. And then you have other projects like Chaos Mesh, which are really focused on chaos engineering, but still um, also related uh, in the observability and analysis space. So this is just, again, CNCF's definition. It may evolve over time. But uh, any analytical analysis-focused projects have kind of landed in this uh, specific um, category. And then you have sandbox projects such as Pixie, uh, OpenCost, both very popular projects today, as well as Chaos Blade, which is most chaos engineering, uh, Schooner, which is Kubernetes um, um, observability, as well as some of the others, such as Kuberhealthy, which is also Kubernetes-related. Observability. So there are different, you know, uh, again, projects within the uh, CNCF landscape which are 
developers working on different specific areas, but then also interoperating uh, to make sure that you know, the larger projects support them. So with that said, I uh, wanted to dive a little bit into, we gave an update at uh, KubeCon in Detroit in October uh, of last year. And uh, again, this is kind of a six month fast forward. So if you uh, want to kind of find out about some of the projects that were worked on in the tag uh, last year, you can go and catch up on the recordings. But this is kind of what we have uh, focused in on based on discussions and, and uh, really uh, participation by different developers, projects, as well as end users uh, on the tag. And this is the cool thing about the technical advisory groups that are set up within the CNCF space, that it gives you the ability, whether it's an engineer who's thinking of a great idea but doesn't have a project yet to land this into, really to think and have a, a larger community discussion around coalescing some of the ideas from an end user perspective, from a product perspective, and then being able to actually find implementation on projects themselves, right? So observability query standardization, uh, query language standardization has been a big topic for a while, but nonetheless, you know, we actually had a lot of good discussion around KubeCon in Detroit uh, six months ago. And that led really to some of the key movers of, of, uh, from the end user community coming and saying, hey, you know, let's draft up a proposal. And uh, this was actually raised in the open telemetry uh, project discussion at KubeCon. And that led, again, I'll uh, dive in a little bit later into, you know, uh, fast forward what you're going to cover today. Another area that came up, which is of prime interest, again, to end users, especially who are using observability components in the, um, from our projects has been continuous cost measurement and optimization. And it is a specialized you know, section, segment of observability, but nonetheless very, very valuable, especially when you're using public cloud infrastructure and you are very interested in measurement of the resources that are being used and the costs that are associated with that. Right? So it kind of falls into the observability space, but it is nonetheless specialized. You have profiling in open telemetry, as we talked about, uh, graphs in observability. Uh, that's an also another area that's being worked on cross-collaboratively. Exceptions as another telemetry data type. Uh, again, and some of you might have heard some of the discussions that are ongoing in the community as to is telemetry data really only the top three signals, that is logs, uh, metrics, and traces, or is it more than that, right? Because as uh, you get more data and you make your systems faster and smarter, you get different types of data, and is that you know, observable or not? So exceptions has definitely come up as another area which has been uh, looked at as a different telemetry type, correlation, Nonetheless, your know, correlation is very valuable. So just wanted to call out some of these areas. And then, of course, the uh, work groups and activities. Uh, there's a lot happening in this area. I'd really you know, urge folks to get more involved. Uh, and there is, again, a lot of good participation, both from end users, where requirements and discussions are shared, as well as uh, producers, that is the vendors themselves, who are writing or contributing um, great com features in the, in the products they build, as well as the open source projects, to be able to participate. That said, I wanted to kind of dive in into three of the key areas that we have driven in the last six months. First, that uh, we have been reaching out as uh, co-chairs to different end users, as well as subject matter experts both in the product space and vendor space, as well as in the uh, end user space, to be able to come and talk about some of the areas that they have innovated on, improved upon existing open source projects, or added um, scalable ways of uh, you know, building out an observability solution. And to that point, Vijay uh, Samuel from eBay, um, he has actually done some foundational work. He presented at the uh, speaker series in, on, the, uh, on the tag, as well as Zane Asgar, who many of you may know from the Pixie project, um, has presented on 
some of the foundational work that has happened on the Pixie project to uh, improve eBPF and specific implementations uh, around eBPF support uh, and interoperability with projects such as Open Telemetry there, right? So again, please catch up on these links. They'll be available. Um, Pixie has also applied for incubation, so one of the good practices we have tried to encourage all the different projects as they graduate from one level to the other is to come and present and update to the uh, tag where the larger community can actually participate, provide comments, review documents, review the code, and be able to actually uh, share if there's anything missing right before we go to the next level. And this works well for smaller projects. Um, there are obviously, you know, much larger projects like Open Telemetry, which where you know you'd really have to hone in on a specific area in order to actually deep dive on uh, feature sets. The other part that I would uh, really urge you to kind of dig into, and this is something that we are super proud um, uh, was brought up in the discussions around uh, the Open Telemetry project meetings, and then collaboratively suggested to land into the tag was uh, profiling and profiling support. Uh, many of you may know Ryan, Ryan Perry, of, uh, who is now part of, I guess, Grafana Labs after the acquisition of their company. Um, he was uh, one of the key drivers in presenting why profiling support is useful and uh, also proposing uh, an open telemetry enhancement proposal which was developed based on the discussions that were had in the TAG meeting to be transformed into profiling support and how that can be implemented in open telemetry, right? So there is a very harmonious relationship between the projects and the TAG where many of these discussions, brainstorming sessions, as well as uh, uh, really looking at different use cases for identifying support for features is, um, is, it happens on the, on the calls. You might want to take a look at this um, presentation. This is a slide deck which was presented on the open telemetry profiling architecture and a proposal uh, for implementation there. Um, again, if some of you attended the project meeting yesterday for Open Telemetry, um, there was some discussion about profiling, but you also heard that on the project's part, um, there, are, there is some delay because of, I think, just lack of maintainers or enough contributors on the profiling side working on the project actively to implement, right? So uh, again, for those of you who are interested in profiling, please get involved on the OTEL side. But this is a good, good presentation to kind of deep dive into some of the architecture uh, and the um, assumptions and the design tenets that have been uh, made and proposed. The other, part, other area, which is super interesting to all of us, and uh, I think many of you probably are very curious about this, is, as I said, the observability query language standardization effort. And um, again, this is um, effort that came about in the Detroit uh, meeting of, at Open Telemetry. We worked with the project closely. It was recommended by the project maintainers, the project GC, to, be, uh, to continue the discussion on the tag and not deemed to be in the scope of Open Telemetry at this moment, because again, the project is very large, but also very focused on um, really being a framework for collection and instrumentation of observability data. Not so much you know, defining and inventing a new query language, which could be a different project, right? So this has been very, very useful, because the primary use case, as many of you know, uh, is that as end users, especially large end users, and eBay and Netflix have been very key in being uh, taking the lead on this, have the uh, foundational problem of having too many types of implementations and frameworks for monitoring that have been set up and instrumented over time, right? So over over many years, you kind of have these islands of data uh, and data collection pipelines and data analysis pipelines for observability that exist in these large you know, organizations, which 
also create a lot of fragmentation. And it is a huge engineering cost on the part of each of these large organizations which have distributed telemetry data and distributed sources of data and hence distributed query languages that they need to know and adapt to that there is a heavy amount of engineering that sits on top of that in order to make sure that all the data can be fetched, analyzed, correlated, interoperated upon and uh, visualized in a useful way. And, and that's a very large, you know, very high level description, but there are very specific use cases when you're looking at large scale data where you need to address these islands and bring them together. So based on that discussion and based on that use case, uh, the eBay and Netflix, and Chris is here from uh, eBay, who will be suggesting, uh, who will be walking through why and what this query specification is about. I just listed you know, some of the timeline parts that, that went through the tag, but we do have an open issue to get a work group set up uh, for actively working on this um, on this area, and think of it as the, you know, maybe even something similar to SQL in the long run, but today at least it's a very inception, it's at its very inception. And the great news is that not only have end users collaborated on this, you know, uh, effort, but also many of the vendors who are, you know, who have their own query languages, such as Lightstep, such as Google, and others have also uh, started, you know, actually uh, collaborating on the same effort. So, with that said, this is the TOC issue. I'd like to um, invite Chris to be able to kind of dive in into some of the areas on the query specification doc. If you haven't looked at it, it's here. I've linked it in the presentation. Please, you know, provide your feedback. This is just the initial charter of what we want to focus in on. But uh, that said, again, Chris. Uh, Come on in and deep dive. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, my name's Chris Larson. Um, I've been in observability quite a while now. I was at Yahoo for quite a bit, um, maintain the ancient, creaky, old open TSDB uh, time series database now, which is being supplanted by Prometheus and all the new kind of uh, time series databases and observability vendors out there. And now I work at Netflix, which has its own time series database internally and log system and tracing system and whatnot. So we've had the problem, or I've seen the problem of query languages over the time and trying to correlate all these signals. So I wanted to jump back into the industry and kind of try to corral everybody, all the vendors, the end users together and see if we could come up with some kind of query standardization across the industry that might unblock um, migrations and uh, customer acquisition coming forward, kind of do the same thing for the flip side, the uh, egress of telemetry data that open telemetry has done with the ingress side. Um, so that's kind of the goal of the work group. Um, we want to help reduce developer toil, uh, like Alitha said, kind of work towards a SQL-ish standard that every developer knows. Maybe it will be SQL, who knows? We don't know. Um, <laughs> or PromQL could be something like that. Um, but we want to help the end user to be able to correlate data, port their data across systems, um, their queries and their dashboards. You don't have to write a new dashboard and new alert every time you switch vendors a product. That would be great, right, for end users. Um, so the goals of the work group itself are pretty narrow. Um, we are going to go old school and do a ton of research and documentation instead of jumping in and saying, oh, is this syntax cool, is this semantic cool? We want to go to all of the um, developers of these uh, modern query languages for metrics, logs, traces, and maybe work with vendors and users to look at query languages for profiling or exceptions, other kinds of data, excuse me, that haven't been uh, really utilized heavily yet as far as correlation. Um, so we want to research all this, compile a list of the research. We want to chat with end users and compile a use case uh, database kind of um, that we can then 
cross-reference these query languages against and see what matches, what doesn't. Uh, look at all the commonalities as far as we can, of which there may be very few, but there should be a few, a couple that we can find, and then work as a group and a community to kind of work through the differences and see if we can arrive at a recommendation for future working groups or projects to actually implement. So the scope is just research analysis and recommendations really, of this work group. So what we need is support and help from everybody in the industry to come up with use cases, um, document those in our database, and once the group's up and running, we'll have that ready and then chat together and work together towards a standard. So that's all I have. Thanks. Well, thank <laughs> all right, so uh, again, I think, thank you, Chris. Um, it's, it's a very interesting area, right? Because it's very large and yet it's very focused. And there are two things that I'm super excited about this initiative. One is that you see the convergence of open source and standards coming into play, right? Because traditionally, the standards world has been very different and very separated uh, from what open source is. And typically, open source has kind of been um, known for ad hoc standards. Linux is a prime example of that. And, and then setting the standard, which is also you know, what is in the implementation and what is adopted by the end user. So a practical open discussion about where some of the pain points lie, what can we do well about observability data being more um, analyzable and easy to analyze, and also bridging the gap from a correlation perspective, making that more efficient, making that more transformable and I would say, uh, think of it as uh, querying as a querying as code, right? Because at the end of the day, people talk about dashboards as code. People talk about um, you know analysis with ML and other techniques, but the primary problem is that when you have large amounts of data and literally petabytes of data that we're emitting from uh, not only our cloud infrastructure, but also from the applications and services that ride on top, and then the uh, end user networks of devices and different components that are talking to them. When you're looking at that solution end to end, how does an end user actually solve the understanding of having system health and performance understanding, which is different from business analysis, by the way. And at that layer, how do you have an intelligent, queryable standard that you can use, which actually bridges all this type of data, and at the same time, all the implementations too? Because it's a handshake. It's like maybe USB-C, right? <laughs> so, so at the end of the day, I hope that we can actually, with this discussion and having the observability community working together, identify the end user use cases, which is beneficial for everyone. Um, also understanding some of the existing query languages and what are some of the best components that could be perhaps reused and uh, interoperably. And also perhaps developing a set of semantic conventions around this, which could be applied uh, in a way where it is actually standardized, not only from an ingestion standpoint, but also from an egress standpoint, right? So this goes back, Ted, perhaps to your pet, pet project right now. <laughs> but um, again, I'd really urge folks to get more involved. The specification and everything, you know, and we have discussed so far is all in docs. You can go and read up on them. The links are there. We are just in the process of getting approval from the TOC to be able to do this work in the work group. And uh, again, it's open to everyone. We. Um, do need to document use cases, we'll do it diligently. But also, you know, different use cases you might have run into as you've implemented observability tools, right? And work towards, you know, really setting the standard for all of us together. So that said, again, um, it's just at its inception, so I'd really invite focus, uh, folks to get involved. 
And the impact of this is huge. I mean, you may not see it, but it's like an iceberg, right? It really is massive in terms of the end user space because the amount of toil that you know, is put in, in in engineering just to kind of compile the data and armies of data scientists and others, you know, who are looking at this data and looking at, okay, how does this uh, really result in having good root cause analysis at a minimum <laughs> is incredible. So um, again, I cannot, you know, uh, restate the importance of this. Going forward, uh, I would say that you know some of the collaborative workspaces back in the tag are that we are also working uh, inbound with the CNCF infrastructure or the CNCF teams uh, across the tags with the security tag, for example, to uh, collaborate on identifying security observability use cases as well as um, other supply chain uh, discussions where you know there are supply chain uh, implications, especially, especially with uh, some of the S bomb uh, software bill of materials um, dependencies that are kicking in, where observability is actually used uh, and solutions are used not only for uh, traceability of uh, provenance, but also perhaps other data that can be conveyed. Uh, through an, in, and collection implementation as well as analysis where that's easy to correlate, right? So there's a lot of uh, discussion happening there. Another area is actually building a standardized uh, observability glossary. It's amazing, you know, beyond the core maintainers who actually work on the code and work on the implementations, how different the world interprets some of the terminology. And I think really having a clear glossary actually would help. In, and it evolves over time because it's a living document and you know we can evolve it all together. This is open source. And also being able to collaborate and drive more collaboration across the T with the TOC, which is you know again the central uh, body and the CNCF, uh, but also build close collaboration with the project. So you know the tag kind of serves as that binding glue. And I really would invite you know, anyone who's interested to get more involved. Um, if you have something, that, you know, any areas that you want to brainstorm about, TAG is a good place to do it. All right, so uh, moving on. Just wanted to call out, these are some of the places you can get involved. Uh, we typically meet uh, 1,600 to 1,700 UTC uh, twice a month. So it's only two calls a month. And then the work groups, of course, meet on their own cadence uh, and can you know, determine their own cadence. Everything is very uh, well documented and, and you know, published uh, very transparently. Uh, you can find a lot of detail on the tag observability repo on GitHub and CNCF. And of course, there's a lot of conversation even on the uh, Slack channel. So if you're interested, you know, please, if you have any areas you want to discuss or something you don't see on the projects which is happening, this is a great place to bring it up. And, and you know, the good thing about that is that if you want to convey that to the TOC, the tag can help do that. If you want to convey it to any of the projects, the tag can also help do that, right? And the tag also can recommend um, different proposals, as you saw with the profiling proposal or with this query specification discussion. Uh, take it to a point where you know, it's a clear recommendation or a spec. And then it is, a, you know, creating a project is then based on the con contributors who gather around that. So with that said, uh, again, please give us your feedback. That's the end of my presentation. Happy to take any questions. Questions? Come on, Ted. Maybe. <laughs> but we're not implementing anything, right? It's just a recommendation. <laughs> yes, Jacob. Yeah, for um, sort of testing this and beginning to look into it, for each of the data types, are you going to have to create sort of a sample CFPB 
in order to work with this, and also the like output of the query and how that's standardized as well. Because both of those, like the, what we what we get in is not necessarily what we want out. Yeah, right? that's true, and uh, I think it's a good question, right? Because again, what's the implementation really, right? And and um, we've thought a bit about it, and I think Chris, uh, you know, was here also, where. We'd like to at least see requirements and case, you know, the use cases clearly specified, and also some of the pain points that exist today, right? Because that gives us a foundational understanding of what the language is trying to even address, and is there anything common there? And also, I think the evaluation of different languages that exist today, and taking the best out of that to be able to have an interoperable you know, proposal is is key. Yeah, I mean, again, uh, I think product managers at companies do this all the time. But on the other hand, it's not open source, right? And it's not an open spec necessarily. And I think that towards the work that all of us have done in the open source observability space, it's very important to realize that certain layers need to be standardized and need to be commoditized, right? Because at the end of the day, what's the value you're looking at in a product? And that's kind of complementary to what we are building in open source. And you can very clearly see to your, you know, it's a long-winded answer to your question specifically that it's very important to address not only the ingress semantic conventions there as well as a schema, a common schema, but also at the same time perhaps also having compliance tests, and I would think about it as a test suite to be able to vet out, okay, if this was really a common uh, proposal, a common rec query language recommendation, then how would you actually comply with it, right? And and how would you actually make sure it's conformant? And it, and it could be as basic as that, right? Because you have an ingress schema sta a schema definition, you have the use cases clearly outlined, and then ex the ability to extend in the future, because we don't necessarily, I mean, this is an iterative process, and we don't expect that we'll identify all the use cases day one, right? They'll come over time, just like in any open source project. But hope, hopefully that provides some. Yes. yes. Yeah. Sure. And I think that that discussion will evolve, right? Because you're right. I mean, obviously, um, uh, not only are the individual elements important in a in a schema, but also the categorization of them, which kind of you know transforms into objects in a language, in a programming language, or in a design, right? But it really is also first understanding what the complexity of the queries are because for example today you know we have uh, in the logging space eq uh, elastic query language for example which now the ec with the ecs donation into open telemetry will greatly solve and resolve some of the inconsistencies and make that more standardized in 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 the ingress of data right but it it needs to carry through all the way right it needs to carry through into the analysis it needs to carry through then into the querying and into the visualization or the reporting of data or the analysis, uh, the visualization of what the relationships between system components 
and, and the uh, data within R or the data related to it R. So think of it as you know this query language really is another component of that whole pipeline to be able to address how do you reconcile what's being uh, uh, consumed in a standard way, uh, safe with OTLP, into what is being emitted at the analysis level, right? And then transformed into visualizations. Yes, yes. Right, I mean, again, a standardized way of understanding and uh, optimizing uh, a language would help greatly in making that whole process more efficient because it's very fragmented today. Any other questions? Yes. Sure. Uh, and I think it's very powerful to get this and to get knowledge out of something where you can define fairly quick stuff. Right. And I think that there is always going to be great product value in the ability to you know, provide the analysis that is required from these queries. What this is addressing is at a lower level, where you are actually understanding the data and being able to uh, have a common language to be correlating all that data, yeah. right? Because that's actually very expensive. And even for a product to be able to do that, it's many years of work, many actually hundreds of hours, thousands of hours of engineering work, even on a product side. And I think that in the world that we live in, especially on standardized cloud native infrastructure, uh, that world is converging, right? And you've seen the solutions also evolve uh, tremendously on the product side. All right, I think we're at time. So thank you, everyone, and thank you for joining.